What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Josh Reese, back at it again with another video. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe, and we'll get into today's video about how you can get into optometry school starting from square one. For those of you who don't know, optometry school is a lot like med school where it's four years and at the end, you become a doctor. Now what the admissions committee of each school is going to look for is that you're ready to be the best doctor that you can be at the end of the four years. And that's really boiled down into three points that you need to make in your application. One, how well you can do in undergrad. Two, how well you can do on the optometry admissions test or OAT. And three, your extracurriculars, proving that you're interested in optometry whether that's through volunteering, work experience, or shadowing. Now let's break it down how my experience went and how you can start today. Now from my personal experience, by the time I decided for sure I wanted to go to optometry school till the time I was accepted into school, it was only about a year and a half. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of time, and really, it's not. What it takes to get into optometry school doesn't require too much time. I think we make it into this big thing in our heads, but every journey is different and most people take longer than they need to to get there. Now for my personal journey, for step one, my undergrad experience, I went through undergrad in three years and I graduated with my degree in microbiology. Now every college is different, but because of the AP classes I had taken and because I did some spring and summer semesters, I was able to graduate in just three years. Now everybody is going to have a different path and some colleges don't even require a bachelor's degree but three years was more than enough time to make sure that you had all the prerequisites that you needed to get into optometry school. Now this step number one of having a good college experience is the most, is the most time consuming one. So if you need to take more than three years on it that's okay as well. But what you do need to make sure is that while you're doing it, you need to look out for just two things. One, you need to have all the prereqs done. Some schools have different prereqs than other schools. Now, it's confusing and it's hard, but what I tried to do is I tried to just take the, the, all the prereqs that all schools had, and then if I had too many classes, that's okay, the more prepared I was going to be for optometry school. I know in my case, anatomy and physiology were required for some schools, but not others. I just made sure that I took them just in case I wanted, ended up wanting to go to that one school more than the other one. And it'll help in optometry school because you're going to have to take anatomy and physiology anyway. So you just need to make sure you have about those 45 credit hours of prereqs that they're looking for and talk to talk and email the to the admissions people at each of the colleges because they'll tell you some shortcuts or things that you can make sure that you need to do for that college. And honestly, all the admissions counselors are super nice at the schools and their information is out there. So just go ahead, give them an email, get your name out there. It's a great thing to do. Now, the second part of your undergrad experiences is your GPA. You're going to be looked at as a candidate to go to optometry school, and they want to know you can handle the academic rigor of it. So their threshold as a, a non-official thing is about 3.0. If you have a 3.0 or above, they know, okay, you're not going to fail out of optometry school. Now, the higher the better, right? The better academic load that you've shown in the past that you can handle, but it's not necessarily super required. As long as you fight for a B average, a 3.0 or above, you're staking your claim as a great optometry candidate. Now for step number two, it's your optometry admissions test. So the OAT or optometry admissions test, you're going to need to take about a year before you go to school. Because schools have rolling admissions, they open their admissions in the summer and usually close them when they have all the spots filled. Some schools don't do rolling admissions, but most every school does. Now, how this will work is you usually want to take your OAT right before you apply or around that time. I took it right after I applied, 
Some people take it before, so they know if they need to retake it, uh, they can. But as a rule of thumb, you usually take it that same summer that you apply. Now, the optometry admissions test is sent to each college individually, so it's not necessarily uh, connected to your application. But there is kind of a threshold that they want you to meet on it. It's graded between a 200 and a 400, 300 being average, right? The average score uh, given that day. Now, what the schools want to see is that you have a score of a 300 or above. Now, that's kind of like the uh, GPA score as well. They kind of will take a 3.0 and above, right? We're aiming for a 300 or above, and you can kind of set those on a similar scale as well. Now, for the optometry admissions test, or OAT, the more you study, the more you're going to just uh, ace that test, right? You want to put in enough time that you can make sure that you have a 300. So you do want to make sure you study, but just know that some colleges are a little bit more rigorous than others, and some colleges you know way more about biology than you need to know for the OAT, or chemistry, OCHEM, whatever the OAT wants you to know, you'll already know enough. So some people might not have to study as hard to take the test, but what I do recommend is taking as many practice exams as you can, so that way you kind of have a sense going into the exam what it's going to be like. The OAT can be taken at any time, so you don't necessarily have to take it that summer, and if you need, you take it that summer and need to retake it later, you can. That's fine. But you do just want to make sure you take it with enough time to prepare by the time that you sit, send in your application. And that can be usually done during your undergrad experience. I know if you want to take a gap year to take it, that's fine. I know people have done that. But just know your OAT score is not everything. It's just kind of you need to meet that threshold for them to know, okay, they can handle some academic rigor. Now, the third and final part of being able to apply to optometry school is your extracurriculars. Now, what you do outside of school matters a ton because they want to know, is this person going to be a good doctor? Now, doctors are charitable, that's why they look at volunteering, and doctors are, you know, hardworking, that's why they look at some of your employment that you've had in the past, and, and they're knowledgeable, that's why they look at shadowing, right? They want to know, is this person actually going to optometry school, or are they just, are we their second choice after med school, right? They didn't get into medical school, so they think they can get into optometry school. So you want to make sure that with your extracurriculars, you're saying, I am doctor material. Now for shadowing, a lot of schools have like a threshold of 40 hours that they'd like you to meet. And that's great if you really don't know you want to be an optometrist. But once you've made that decision, really any shadowing hours after that is just icing on the cake. What you want to make sure what you accomplish with shadowing is that you learn the scope of practice. You want to shadow enough doctors that you know, okay, what is an optometrist? They can practice like this in a family practice. They can go to Walmart. They can work with ophthalmologists. They can specialize in vision therapy, specialize in special contact lenses. You want to make sure that you know what an optometrist is. You want to make sure that with shadowing, you just accomplish what you need to accomplish, and that is knowing that optometry is for you. The next part of it is the volunteering. Now, when a volunteering opportunity presents itself, I say throw yourself at it, right? You want to just volunteer when you can. Start now as if you were a doctor and you wanted to give back to your community. Now, whether that's in different things that your college or that your church has, go and volunteer. Now, you're going to be able to put all of your volunteering experience into your application. So if you have too much, that's okay. You just want to make sure that you have enough to say, I didn't just waste my life away in the books. I'm also a giving person, right? And there's not a benchmark of not enough or too much. You just want to make sure that when an opportunity presents itself, you go for it and you can kind of start right now to have the attitude that a doctor will have. Now, the most important part is getting optometric experience. And that is a big part of the application. So what you want to do is, with those doctors that you shadowed, you want to kind of work for them. Or, 
you can get experience through an optometry or a pre-optometry cl club at your college and kind of uh, talking with schools and, and learning about what they have in those clubs. Or you can even go and do school screenings as kind of a volunteer experience and an optometric experience, right? You Just anything that can get you out there into the field of optometry is great. It's and Now, this is just some icing on the cake. Most of the extracurriculars are just icing on the cake once you're a good applicant. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you have something under your belt to show for it. Now, I worked a summer as an optician in a family practice, and I worked about a year and a half during college as a vision therapist. Now, working and being in school might be too much for some people. It's okay. You can just work summers. You don't need to have a magic amount. You just need to make sure that you've worked enough to know it's good for you and that you can get a good letter of recommendation from an optometrist. Now, optometric experience is important, but it's not the best thing, right? The best thing will be submitting that application, getting your GPA high enough, OAT high enough, and then just being a genuinely good caring person that's ready to be an optometrist. But usually people who want to be optometrists at least have dipped their foot into the water of optometry in some way or another. So whatever you choose to do is great for you and will help ice the cake to be an optometrist. Now once you have those three pillars done, you're good in your college prereqs and you've taken the OAT, and you have all the extracurriculars that you'd like, you're ready to submit your application. And you're going to be a great optometrist. But as for what you can do today to start, is just make a plan. What you want to do is lay out your major, lay out the prereqs, lay out the graduation requirements, and make sure that you're on the right path to complete those. Now, once you have that done, it's halfway there, but also plan in there when you're going to take the OAT, when you're going to have time to study for it, and as you go through that journey, just keep your eyes out for any shadowing opportunities, volunteering opportunities, or just any way that you can dip your toes into the world of optometry before going to school. And really, that's all it takes. You can start today, and I hope you do start today, to have some great experience under your belt and become a wonderful optometry applicant. I know the kind of people who watch a video like this, they're gonna be great optometrists already because they're trying. So keep up the good work, good luck with your optometry application.